and I had an instant in the canyons. But for me and what I'm trying to accomplish with this car, like it's, it's, it's damn near perfect. Yeah. It's damn near perfect to, for a dual duty. That's my recipe. I'm not gonna speak for everybody, but oh, <laughs> what now? Like still, Casso <laughs> spec, Tupperware, <laughs> Pyrus booty. Welcome back. Today I'm here with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. Start with uh, what your car this is. This is a 2008 BMW M3, E90 M3. E90, yep. making it four door. Four door, four nice. door, Costco spec, Sam's Club <laughs> spec, soccer practice spec, yoga studio. You'll find this at all, any and all those places <laughs> in, in this form. Oh man, this is a nice car. Before we jump into the car, let's quickly talk about your past. Like what kind of cars you had, how you ended up tracking your car. I don't think we have enough like SD <laughs> car. You got a couple of terabytes, like that's gonna be it. I've always been into something with wheels mm -hmm. ever since I was elementary school. So no one's gonna remember this. No one's gonna even know about this, but junior high, high school, I was like, I really got into, I always, I always had hobbies and collectibles. So I spent a lot of time at hobby stores and I got into Tamiya cars, like yeah. small battery powered um, cars that race on a closed track, um, they're like about, you know, yay big with ball bearing rollers on the sides. And like, I spent a lot of my youth racing those, spending time at hobby shops. My mom dropped me off and then spend the whole evening there racing and you win little plaques and stuff. So that was like, that was my first kind of step my toes in the water into like modifying. Cause with those things you could do, even at that scale, like you can get carbon fiber chassis right. and faster ball, smoother rolling ball bearings Bigger and motor. gearing motors. <laughs> oh, so you, yeah, yeah, so that was, that's where I started. And that kind of just graduated me into RC cars, kind of the same thing with modifying and gearing and motors and batteries. Fast forward a few years after that, I learned how to drive and then I got into like real cars. Yeah. And then that led me to the canyons in Mexico, of course. I spent a lot of time in Mexico. Mexico, Mexico, you know, shout out to all my amigos south of the border. Toge, whatever you want to call it, canyon driving, Hondas. That's, that's where I started. That's all I could afford. Um, NA. Um, yeah, it was all just four cylinder, small, 2,500 pounds, soaking wet, you know, four bangers uh, that looked like crap and kind of drove like <laughs> crap too. But to me, they were Ferraris at the time. I got into Subarus. Uh, I had a couple of WRXs, again, back in the canyons and doing that thing and loved them to death. They understeered like crazy, I guess with the four wheel drive. And I had an instant in the canyons. Not a, not, obviously I still got all my, I'm still here. Yeah. So it wasn't terrible, but it kind of like made me think maybe I should start going to the track or some kind of closed, safer environment. I started autocrossing. I kind of fell in love with that. Like just banging off rev limiter for like 40 seconds around this, this parking lot. WRX, the Subaru phase. I got into Toyotas to A86s. Once I got into the Corollas, that really like, that was like the springboard. Cause that car, I don't know if I felt like it it better suited me, it better suited how I wanted to drive. It was just so nimble, it was so slow, but so fun, and it sounded so good. Driving, we started going to Streets of Willow, Horse Thief Mile. I only drove those two tracks, so it was the only tracks I felt like I was fast at. I could catch Corvettes in corners, I could catch like big power stuff. They blow me away in the straights, but I just felt like I was invincible in that freaking car. Like just, uh, it, it felt so fast and like life kind of happened. Like I wanted my family to grow. I wanted my career to grow. So I had to kind of stop everything and I sold everything. I got rid of everything. I stopped driving for years and I met my wife and um, one of my birthdays, she took me to like Irwindale. She paid for a like stock car experience, oh, you know, nice. where you could drive a stock car around Irwindale. And that was the first time I had driven on a track in like years since I like decided, okay, I'm gonna be an adult now and I'm gonna pay bills and I'm going to shop at Costco <laughs> and I'm gonna, you know, wear clean underwear every day, like that stuff. So she sent me, she to me on that, that birthday present, that like that stock car experience and like that kind of like lit the fire again. So that very next week, I was like, I gotta go buy a car. NB, NB Miata. I started running like Roadster Cup with extreme speed. Cause now it's like, fast forward. Now it's like, okay, we have extreme speed. We have different speed ventures is, is, exists now. And they're running track days and there's it's multiple organizations. It's starting to grow in SoCal. Kind of, I felt like I plateaued. That got me into a 350Z. I started running Nissan Challenge. The competitive bug bit me. And then that snowballs into, okay, now I'm, I'm adult now i have a little bit more <laughs> income now let's get a car that i really want my dream car has always been honda s2000 i was able to get a honda s2000 a good friend of mine gave me a good deal and i got an s2000 now i'm like i could have died that day like after i got the s2000 that was it <laughs> there's nothing past that like i don't know that is the top of the mountain for me 
that car. So I, when I had that car and I was driving it and actually driving it fast, like, you know, 156, 155 at Button Willow, I'm like, oh, dude, this is, this is it. So um, that car, that car went, went, went away, RIP. And uh, now it's led me to like, I guess, which is the SoCal natural progression. Like you go from Honda to BMW now, so everybody else is doing. So uh, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fit. I'm doing that now. So here we are with my with my BMW. Oh. Mm -hmm. Why four door? <sighs> People are gonna kill me for this. I think the four door just aesthetic wise, I think it looks better. I think it has like wider hips, if that makes sense. When I decided I was gonna get an E9X, most of the cars you see on track and performance builds are not are the two or the E92. Um, and I like that car. Don't get me wrong. If I would have found a great deal on that, I would have got it 92. It's just that when I was looking at the time, this one popped up. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of just it was it was the spec that everyone told me that I should be getting this is still this BMW stuff the spec thing is still new to me like <laughs> I still feel like if I'm gonna get a BMW or like Audi or Mercedes-Benz like a German car like I'm thinking okay this is a luxury car so I want all those luxuries I want like the nav heated powered everything the sunroof I want all those things but I guess that's like all blasphemy everybody just wants the stripper spec like yeah. I'm uh, Alex Bernstein will, uh, he's you know one of the many people that introduced me to like different specs and like this enthusiast spec, bare bones, cloth seats, single hump, you know, no nav, no sunroof, manual transmission. Like this is like the desired, I don't know, performance track enthusiast spec. So right. um, it popped up in a four door, which I apparently with like, it had Vox red interior at the time too, which I guess is, is sexy. Mm. So um, this was like the spec and it was a great price is the four. For me, all I cared about is I wanted the four door at the time. I just felt like it just looked wider. I don't know, it just looked aggressive a do all thing and coming from s2000 that was like kind of full race car where it was only a do one thing it was trailer it or drive it to button willow and do a couple laps and then get it home and then park it here for a month until the next time that was i don't know maybe i'm getting old too maybe i'm getting <laughs> maybe i'm getting old maybe i'm getting i'm going to that adult thing and i don't necessarily want a car anymore that i only drive 10 times a year mm -hmm. You know, even if you know, it's fun to win, it's fun to go fast, it's fun to PB. I'm not taking anything away from that. I love that stuff. When we started talking about spending this kind of money on cars, at 2000 is expensive too. I, if I'm spending that kind of money, I want to drive the car, you know? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to just, and I don't want my commute to only be up and down the five to Button Willow went back, man. <laughs> That's not like the most appealing in the world. When you bought it, was it stock? This car was stock. Okay. This car was stock. I think uh, it had, well, it had BC coilovers and I think, that was it. All right. Yeah. So walk us through what's been done. Uh, so. I, I don't know how deep we're going to get. But all right. <laughs> so exterior wise, um, Ridgeline Motorsport GT4 V2 front lip. It's the shorter version. OK. Because as you can see, I have a, a evil driveway. Yeah. So that helps with the uh, clearance. Track spec, uh, Motorsport hood vents. This is something that I did not want to do. Um, I love the stock look of the hood. I've run track spec vents on every single one of my track cars. They're proven, they are legit, like the data's there. Um, they help, they improve performance. I get all that stuff. I just love like just the stock look of this car. Like this car is some, one of the few that I think just looks good out of the box, like off the showroom floor with nothing done. Everyone's yelling at me. E9X has, can have heating issues and that you just evacuate so much heat when you put these vents on. So I did them. My only trade off was like, okay, if I'm gonna do them, I'm gonna paint them. Right. So I painted them, tried to color match them as best I could white. So um, that's that. Uh, T37s. Um, <laughs> gotta have T37. You gotta have T. Right? Yeah, unfortunately, like, geez, Louise, man, like, why does everything cost on money? <laughs> like, so <laughs> T's on as like all the other cars. T's on on this. I think uh, spec is 18 by 10 and a half plus 20. I think. Yep. Square square setup. 285 Bridgestone RE71s RS all around. This is a good starting point. Square setup, 10 and a half, 275s or 285 tire wise, and send it. Yeah. So, well, what about the brakes? Brakes, uh, Stop Tech, ST60 front, 
StopTech ST40 rear, so six piston in front, four piston rear, 380 mil rotor in the front. I think the back is 355. This is a, I mean, I have such good friends. Like it was, this car came together so fast because I have good friends and they already had these cars and I've already gone through the trials and tribulations. So a lot of the stuff that we're gonna go through is stuff I got from my buddies. It's stuff I got from guys you've already seen at the track and guys I've already gone through all the pain and suffering and knew know what works and what doesn't work. So this is a set I got used from a buddy of mine for a great, great price. I couldn't pass it up. I would have loved APs. Everyone loves APs. I love APs too. AP money is just, that's the, that's the hard part. It's hard <laughs> to come by AP money these days. So this stop take kit um, was a, something that my buddy was running. Uh, he already like put knockback springs in it. He already had good pads in it. Uh, rotor still had a ton of life. This was a good starting point if i if i like it love it stick with it if i don't i wasn't crazy crazy invested i can sell it and i can upgrade to something bigger and better right on so what, uh, what kind of pads we're best those we're best those pads super bitey super bitey uh, initial bite is cr is crazy very squeaky very dusty as any like race pad would be I don't, i'm curious to see how other pads perform before i put this set on i had um pfc's pfc pads on just with the stock calipers and i liked it i've run those pads before um you know you kind of modulate a lot easier i guess with those pads so i'm curious to see like pfc pads or csg to see how those feel mm. um brake pads just everything costs money brake pads cost yeah. like 500 bucks yeah. for brake pads i'm gonna go down <laughs> and they're just it's a it's wear item you know that's just a that's a consumable yeah 500 bucks consumable. So um, pads I got from both CSG and PFC that I do want to try out, see if I can improve the braking. But right, as, of, as of right now, for my novice driving skills in this car, like more than enough. I don't, braking is one thing that I don't complain about or really think about too much with this car. It has more than enough braking power as is. I don't think you're exactly a novice. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, you're at what 155 now? 155 yeah. but this car it's so weird to say that too because like s2000 full my full aero s2000 take as much weight out of it as i can to do 155 and that car was like flirting with death for me like i am like i'm i'm fighting the car i'm fighting for my life right through, through that lap and just sawing <laughs> at the wheel and just looks great on camera though but <laughs> i'm just like trying to kill myself and i do a 155 in this car and it's just like cruising on huh? <laughs> like you know I can, I can sip tea and like it's nuts like how much easier this car is to drive so i say that to say like to do 155 in this car i just think it has so much more potential so it's not like it's slow i guess it's decent you i know? think it's fast I, but there's guys going way faster well you know? i mean you, you gotta remember you got like full interior yes yes everything yes, is, like yes. you said this is a costco spec yes so. yes 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 yeah so. i think you're doing great man <sighs> have you ever weighed this car yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i just weighed it we came out from rob's and uh it is right now it's 3360 okay yeah so stock weight huh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. i mean i've taken out I, i've done the weight savings that i felt like i could do tastefully i've done like the gentleman's weight savings you know like i'll do the lightweight anti-gravity battery that saves like 50 pounds right there you know wheels lighter wheel the seats um seats of course i did uh the deck lid the, the trunk lid is carbon nice so i did that all the spl arms are all lighter that stuff saves weight too the big brake kit you know the caliper should be save weight too so i've tried to save weight tastefully and expensive <laughs> as well yeah. all that stuff is like expensive yeah. like the smart way to do it would just be to start drilling holes and everything and <laughs> taking out all the interior and cutting wires and holes titanium titanium carbon fiber a couple of speed holes there speed holes and bring out the sawzall and like going to town yeah that's like 20 bucks and you save like 300 pounds. You, you got know? you got to call Mike for that. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> Me and Mike have spoken too. Like it's 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 tempting. It's tempting when you when you know the potential of this car and you see your buddies like going fast, you know, and doing it for less buck, hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we talked about it. I I want to. I don't necessarily want to do that right now. Mm -hmm. I don't say I don't want to say anymore. I'm still competitive. I still want to compete. I still want to go fast. I still want to PB. I don't want this car to, to go down that road. Yeah. You know, I I came out of S2000 that was like that, and I enjoyed it. But it like looking back, like I wasn't 
driving the car like I wanted to drive the car, you know? I, it's, I was only driving the car like a dozen times a year, you know? If, if that's if the wife's in a good mood, you know? Uh -huh. um, <laughs> you know, one track day a month, that's like pushing it. So with this car, when I'm not at the track, I can still drive it, I can still enjoy it. It still like looks good from like about here, oh, yeah. Yeah, 10 yeah. feet away, you know? So I don't necessarily want to do all those things. If I could do 155s with this thing and this spec, like one, literally a 155, hop on the five and come back down here and stop at Sam's Club on the way home, mm -hmm. then that's that's money for me. That's my, I think I'm getting old, man. I think I'm just getting old. I hate to say this, I right? <laughs> just, it sounds so wrong coming out of my mouth. Like I shouldn't feel this way. Like I just, it's, is that growth? Is that, uh, is that maturity? Is that stupidity? I don't know. <laughs> what about power? Have you dynoed it yet? Power, I did not dyno it. Um, on the butt dyno, it's amazing. Yeah. The butt dyno, the numbers are off the charts. It has the sub two speed house like power package. So like the mock snail pulley system, it has the mock snail, mock snail intake, mock snail mid pipe with the Acura exhaust. I think that's power wise. I Pretty sure that's it. And the Epic, Epic Motorsports, the tune. BMW kind of like did it right with this thing, you know? It's very unimpressive as far as like the bolt-ons that you'll do, but it gets the job done. Steve at uh, uh, European yes. Autosport, yeah, they have a dyno there. I should throw it on to see what it is. The thing that scares me about the dyno is, if I put it on the dyno and it makes good power, then I look at myself in the mirror like, why am I going so slow <laughs> if this motor is so strong? <laughs> or opposite end, if you put it on the dyno and it, does it make good power? Then I'm like, wow, what's wrong with my motor? Like, uh, what did I do wrong? Like, now I got to spend money. Like, so I just rather like, kind of like be in the dark. Like, I don't want to know. For me personally, I look at it like we talk about Button Willow. There's a certain mile power I want to hit by uh, coming down the back straight before I get into the braking for sunset. And if I hit that, I'm like, okay, the motor is like good. Yeah. So. Power for me, like I said, I've always come from four cylinder crap boxes, like, I don't know, maybe 200 horsepower on a good day downhill with the wind at your back. This is like double that. So I feel power wise, like I'm, I'm fine. I, I couldn't ask for more <laughs> to go from a Civic to this. Like I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Looks like it's, it's been driven. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. A lot of, a lot of patina. <laughs> I mean, this is fresh from freaking Button Willow. This is no, yeah. uh, like a wipe down, a car wash, and that's it. Yeah. I'll come in, I'll check for leaks, nothing leaking. Okay, then we're good to the next time. <laughs> oh, we forgot to talk about the uh, suspension. Oh. Yeah, so besides from SPL you talked about, what uh, shocks are these? Um, these are MCS one ways. MCS okay. one way. Um, Spring rate in the front, 13K in the front, 11K in the rear. Uh, that is true rear. True rear. True rear. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and I got, that's not for me. All that like expertise and knowledge and setup wise, that's from Alex. That's from Sub2 Speedhouse. Um, that was his recommendation. That's something that he's gone through the pain and suffering beforehand and kind of understands what works and what won't work. And I got to give him all the thanks in the world for his insight and knowledge there because he's the one that recommended and like sourced them for me surprise surprise they work like yeah. it's it's good i mean for me that those spring rates seem like from now to looking like mass pretty it's pretty high but i guess the car is also very heavy yeah um and it has a huge motor up front it works man and that's on a one way like for me i've always run you know jrz jrz two ways with external reservoir you know big boy you know baller baller suspension um and this mcs these aren't cheap either you know <laughs> but this is a this is a one-way coilover and it is it's, it's doing the job now i could probably get more performance out of a out of a two-way or even a three-way but for me and what i'm trying to accomplish with this car like it's it's, it's damn near perfect. Yeah. It's damn near perfect to, for a dual duty, not breaking the bank to do like 155 with a with a one way. Fine, I'll sleep. I sleep like a baby at night, you know, <laughs> knowing I can do that. That's 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 more than enough. I, I like and I like. I guess there's some personal personal gratification in like being able to say like the car is semi competitive and it performs well for my standards. You know, that, not the bare minimum, but like not going over the board. You know, not breaking the bank, throwing money at the car. It gets the job done. Like I said, BMW kind of like got it right. This car is kind of pretty set up, you know, out of the box. Like you just got to do a little sanding, a little shaving here and there, smooth little little rough edges out. And then like it's <laughs> chef's kiss, man. It's money. So I knew I wanted JRZ. I knew I wanted MCS. Yeah. It was going to be one of those two. Yeah, because okay. I've done that dance where you buy four different coilovers, you know, and they all 
are crap, not crap, but they're not, they all, you're, you're wanting something more out of them. And you end up spending, you know, 10 grand or whatever on four different sets of coilovers when you should have spent the freaking five or four in the first place and, and bought a good set. Like I've done that dance, I don't want to do that anymore. Like I said, I'm, I'm getting old maybe, I'm being a more of an adult, I'm trying to be more mature about this whole hobby that we have. Just buy once, cry once, man. Like it, it's either said than done, don't get me wrong. You gotta work some overtime to get it done, but it's just it's just so much less painful, you know? And then you can spend that time enjoying the car, yeah. you know, as opposed, as opposed to me bouncing between different brands and manufacturers with coilovers and rates and valving and buy once and now I can spend that time I would have wasted in tuning and tweaking and getting laps and getting comfortable and learning the limits of the car with that suspension, that's the recipe. That's my recipe. I'm not going to speak for everybody, but just made it more blacker pretty much. Red, red. red fox red. red. Oh, wow. Yeah, so oh, all the red, okay. yeah, all the door calls. That's, a, yeah, that's <laughs> infamous BMW. If you're like driving, you hear that, it's like, oh, what now? Like, because something's always <laughs> freaking chime. BMW, dude. That chime is like pure evil, man. <laughs> It's a clean car. Yeah, I like. I mean, I love. People are gonna hate me for that too. The getting rid of the fox red. It had fox red interior, and that's like one of the desirable specs. But and I liked it, and that's why I got rid of it because I felt like I'm gonna put tires back here. Yeah. I'm gonna put a jack back here. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna go off at sunset, and I'm gonna be covered <laughs> in button willow silt, and it's gonna be all on my fancy fox red interior. Yeah. So I'm destroying it. You know why not? give that sell that to someone who's going to enjoy it and keep it clean and then i'll just put black in here which is which hides dirt a lot better Man. i just think i don't know i think the black just looks a little bit cleaner this is a car yeah. i'm trying to keep i want it to look nice yeah. as opposed to it other track clean. cars it's, You're complaining about spending money, but you got, you got all the nice I know, parts. I know. What's going on? Because they're telling me this. About all my, I'm, I'm leaning on the knowledge of the guys and gals that have come before me, and they've right. done this, and they, they've done all the trial and error. Um, I just, I'm just cheap. You know, I just hate spending money. <laughs> but uh, I'm, that's another buy once, cry once thing. I, that was, that's funny. Like when I say buy once, cry once, I did that wrong. I bought a <laughs> cheaper version, another brand, which is, it was still good. It was still fine. But then I upgraded to this one and I was like, oh, okay, this is like butter. <laughs> now I see why you spend, you know, the thousand bucks or whatever. This is, this is butter. So CAE for the win. And this is, I'm starting to see a lot more of the uh, control. Yeah, yeah, the big, the JQ works steering wheel. Like I had a BMW Performance on there that I got from Josh, another hand-me-down. And it was, it was cool, it was fine, it was perfect. But then, you know, you get to, I just, I think my track crowd is changing now. You know, I come from the canyons and now I've kind of graduated to now, like the my track friends I hang with now, they're like, some of these guys are in different tax bracket, you know? <laughs> so I don't want to call it peer pressure, but you start seeing all their little toys and things and stuff like that. And I want some of that stuff too, you know? So that was one of those things where I knew I wanted to get the steering wheel. I knew I wanted to upgrade. I'm not sure what direction this car is going to go in the, in the future. So I want to be future proof. Like if I end up putting a roll bar in here and I go like full, you know, harness and whatnot, I want a detachable wheel. This is the best option right now, I, I in my opinion. KMPs out there, mm -hmm. they've been out there for a long time and that's a great wheel too. I've played with them on other, other guys' cars. And you keep all the all the functions. It keeps, you keep all your buttons, all your, all your horn, mm -hmm. your in mode, your volume, your audio stuff, it retains all that all that stuff. No airbag light, almost whatever wheel you want on here. I mean, I chose the Sparkle one, the 330 with the flat bottom. You see, you have a bunch of room. You can put almost any wheel that has this kind of similar design on here. So you're not stuck to just whatever JQ sells on their website. You can you can put another wheel on here. The big, the meat and potatoes is the quick release system right. and all their electronics. Right. So. And you got the pin yeah, going this is, into. This is yeah, it's this is money well spent. Spec it's, a, it's a little bit of lunch money, but I think yeah. I, don't, I don't know anyone that's gonna buy this and regret it. Like this is this, this is so nice, and then this is my excuse is like this is driving experience. Like you know, this is what you're aside from the pedals and the shifter. You know, this is what this is your connection to the car. This is your main connection to the car. You kind of got to spend a little time, maybe not necessarily money, but this in this case money. You got to spend a little time, like making sure that this is the way you like it. This the shifter and your brake throttle, you know, clutch, like. You gotta spend a little time and possibly a little money there because that's your connection 
to the car other than your butt yeah you know, mm. i guess in the seat too but and then i have like the schroth uh, the quick fit pro system nice. to run on track i'm trying that out now yeah i'm kind of i mean it's the first time i ever run anything like that like a dot approved um like harness system you can still run the hans with it too so i mean i kind of i ran it for the first time my last track day a couple weeks ago and it, it was it was nice yeah. it, was, it was comfortable yeah. as as comfortable as a hans and a harness could be without the you know the roll bar and or cage. I have the same on my Civic. I, oh, no. I, yeah, I actually bought one for E36. Oh. But then I didn't realize the buckles were different. Oh. The buckles are different size. Yeah. Oh, so I thought it would have been just like a length thing. No, the length, length is okay. Oh. But, um, I really like this because this is designed for a car like this, yep. right? Where mm -hmm. you don't have a roll bar. Yep. But you want to use a harness. Yep. And I, I, I don't know, coming from someone who came out of a crash too. Oh yeah. I kind of swear by the, like a roll bar. I, I would, I would love, I don't know, I, my plans were to put a roll bar in here, but new cars are, are different. These aren't right. like, you know, Side airbag. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, I put my 2000 on a wall, you know, and I had a roll bar and I had a Hans and I had a diff grip on the wheel. I sh that was where I messed up at and I messed my hand up. But if I let that wheel go like I'm supposed to, I would have walked away. I walked out of that car, you know? And that's with that. And I think the the helmet, the harness, the roll bar, the safety stuff I had set up, like it allowed me to walk out of that car. So in my mind, I'm kind of married to that. Like anything I get into and put on track, like I, I want that. So that was a plan for this car. But like I said, I, this is new to me and I don't know everything. And luckily I have friends and guidance out there that they do know a lot more than me. And um, were educating me on how stiff this car is how set the chassis is how safe it is like just this freaking b pillar compared to a civic b pillar this is this is dang near bulletproof dude <laughs> civic b pillar is like a freaking yeah. toothpick you know so <laughs> that car is gonna it's gonna soda can yeah. if you do anything with it this car is a lot safer so i'm gonna run i'm gonna run this way for the time being maybe a roll bar comes in in, in the future if okay. i find you know a company out there that is making something that i like you know i uh i met with uh, alex he said he might go full cage yeah so <laughs> there, yeah. there's your uh yeah. salvation army there it right is there. No, I'll tell <laughs> dude man so, and it's still, sometimes i don't even want this stuff but it's like man like uh, yeah. such a good deal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I, as long as i can run my hans for now i really just want the i want the, my hans is, is my biggest thing right so i can run the hans now with this system and this dot approved so Full set of wheels in the back seat, and then put all my other track crap in the trunk. What S what S two thousand can do that? Now, I'm not talking <laughs> crap about S two thousands. I I had one. I love that's my dream car. So right now, you think this is probably the best choice, as far as your point of view, right? For dual duty, right? For dual duty, there's other options out there, but for the buck, um, for what it can do, it's kind of tough, man. I see why a lot of like the Honda guys and other you know make model guys like they kind of graduate to like BMW. This is like, I think I weighed this, I forgot how much it was. Maybe it was like 17 pounds or 16 pounds, something like that. And it fit all the OEM, like, you know, the lighting stuff. Yeah. Um, but it just weighs a lot less. And I put all my, <laughs> put all the stuff in here. Cost, <laughs> still, Costco spec, Tupperware, Pyrus booty. Got a little hot Cheetos in there. This is, this is a for legit Costco car. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. Is the battery underneath though? Yeah. Yeah, uh, battery. Is it, is it uh, possible to see that? Yeah. So you can kind of see it, but like anti-gravity battery, I think the stock battery, the stock battery is a, I don't know why this car is like such a huge battery. The stock battery I think weighs like 60 pounds yeah. and some change maybe. <laughs> and I think this thing is like 12 or 13. So this is a, that's a huge weight. This has to be one of the first mods you do. If you're get a car like this E9X, you know, coupe or four door, and you're someone that wants some performance mods, bang for the buck, like that's, this is one of the, this was a little bit of lunch money too, <laughs> but um, uh, I'm happy with it. That this Good. is, this was money well spent. Like, All right, a couple questions. All right. 350Z versus S2000. S2000. The car is just such a riot, man. Mm. Like when you're pushing, when you're on the knife's edge, when you're pushing like nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, it's so good and it's fast mm. and it's fast. And the, the recipe is not hard. There's a, there's a million of them out there and you see guys that are faster than you and how they're going fast and why they're going fast. The data's out there, the solo data's out there. You can replicate it. Like, I don't want to say easy, but the path is, is, is there. Like, so that's 2000 for me, that's 2000. Okay. Yeah. Any shout outs? Oh. 
again we don't have enough we don't have enough sd card man <laughs> like this car is like a culmination of like everybody there's so many hands and minds and hookups and people <laughs> i need to thank for like i came out of a crash and everybody kind of like rallied around me and was like super willing to help me out and get me into my next platform which was the m3 i can't name everybody they, they know who they are but i will say like there's some like essential european auto source if you got a bmw you got a something german even a tesla they do teslas like go to eas don't don't look in it don't, Cry, buy once, cry once. Just, just, just go there. Rob at Chew Works. Robert at Chew Works. Everybody knows Robert. SoCal Drivers Club. Everyone says driver mod. Seat time, seat time, seat time, which is 100% true. You're gonna consumables. Mikey, the biggest consumable is tires. So TPM parts. <laughs> Mikey at TPM. Mikey's just such a good dude. He's a track guy. He's just so flexible. Like he'll help you out. It's European Auto Source. It's TPM. Big last but not least is Sub Two Speed House. Man, like this is you interviewed Alex. Like him curating like all these things in one spot. So you're not bouncing between a dozen different people to get your, your build done or get whatever you want to accomplish done. Like he has it all there, you know, and he's he's done it and he's seen it and he's he's cried in the shower, you know, over the stuff that didn't go right. And he's celebrated on top of the podium with the stuff that did right, you know, so. Any final thing you want to say? I respect all builds, street guys, stance guys, drift guys, but just for me, track it man if you're doing these mods that are like performance stuff like to go fast you can only push it so hard in the street you can only push it so hard in the canyons like go to the track and like you know see what's what and it's safer there like i came out of a crash like <laughs> come on like i should be the spokesperson for this like just it's it's so and once you go once that that bug is gonna bite you you're never gonna look back cool thank you for your time oh anytime i'll see you next time oh yes yeah. oh yes